It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Good thank to see Jesus. everybody that's here. Before we start, let's pray. Father, we thank you for another Lord's Day. We thank you for another day that you've made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you that you've given us so much. You've given us life, and you've given us everlasting life. Lord, you've given us forgiveness for sin. You've given us a, a, yes. a hope, yes, an anchor for our soul. Lord, you've given us a future. You've given us eternity to spend in the presence of God in fullness of joy. And it's all because of Jesus. And Lord, we're so thankful today for him, for that name that's above every name. And Lord, as we gather today, we pray that that name would be lifted up and he would be glorified. Lord, we pray that you meet every need that's represented here today, and we pray for your spirit to freely move in our midst. Yes, Jesus. So, Father, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me give you a few quick announcements. Uh, prayer meeting tonight at 6 o'clock. Rest home Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock at Yancey House. We'd love to have anybody that would like to go meet us up there at 6 o'clock. Our midweek time of Bible study and prayer is Wednesday night at 7. That's what I have. Any more announcements? Okay. So I got them covered, huh? All righty. Well, Keisha? Some dry better than others, but. Uh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> I've got a card here I want to share with you. It says, thank you so much for all the prayers, for the love for my dear mom and for the flower arrangement. Words can't express how thankful Brandon and I are to be a part of this church family. God brought us here just when we needed it most. And that's from Amy and Brandon. All right. Anybody else have anything that we need to mention? Okay. You have anything, Jeremiah? Nope. All right. Well, I believe it's time to worship. What do you think?
I look to you, Jesus Redeemer, for all who look to you will be made whole. Let's sing that again. I look to you, you are my healer. I look to you, you restore my soul. I look to you, Jesus Redeemer. For all who look to you will be made whole. I look to you, O King Eternal. Lifted from the earth for me, upon a cross. You suffered such loss Your sacrifice has made me free I look to you You are my healer I look to you You restore my soul I look to you, Jesus Redeemer. For all who look to you will be made whole. I look to you, O King Eternal. Lifted from the earth for me Upon a cross You suffered such loss Your sacrifice has made me free truth in that song that everyone that looks to you will be made whole and Lord sometimes we're healed in this world sometimes we're made whole by coming home to be with you but Lord when our eyes are on you it's good you are our healer you're our redeemer you're the one that restores us when we go through 
such hardship in this life. But Lord, in Jesus Christ, we're made whole. And we're so thankful for that today. So Lord, we just worship and praise and bless that holy name of Jesus. Just sing that name this morning. that name to be so precious and Lord we're so thankful that you've given us that name whereby the throne of heaven becomes a mercy seat and Lord you've given us the name of Jesus to cause the enemy to flee the name of Jesus that causes every knee to bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord name that causes heaven to listen and hell to tremble. Lord, we're so thankful for that name. Your name is like honey on my lips. Your spirit's like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I love you, I love you, Jesus, Jesus, holy hand, anointed. Exalted 
Lord, we worship you this morning. There's no name like that name. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That name is above every name. And Lord, we thank you that we can use that name. And Lord, everything changes. Because Lord, all heaven recognizes and all heaven glorifies that name. Lord, we worship you today. declares the glory of the risen Lord who can compare with the beauty of the Lord forever he will be the Lamb upon glory of the risen Lord who once was slain to reconcile man to God forever you will be the Lamb upon the The Lamb 
lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow the knee and worship you alone. Lord, we bow before you and we worship you today. And we bless you and we praise you. And Lord, we thank you that you're Lord on the mountain and you're Lord in the valley. You're Lord in the good times. You're Lord in the difficult times. You're Lord over the past, present, and future. You're the Lord over our lives. And you're the Lord of eternity. And Lord, we're so thankful that you've given us that mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just declare that name today. Lord, we speak Jesus over this congregation. We speak Jesus over every problem and every situation that we face. We speak Jesus over this nation. God, we speak Jesus because that name is power. That name is healing. And that name is life. So we declare your lordship this day. Hallelujah. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. I know there is peace in your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus every dark addiction starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus your name is power and your name is healing your name is life Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety. To every soul held captive by depression, I speak Jesus your name is power and your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold shine through the shadows burn like a fire Your name is power, and your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Shout Jesus from the mountains, and Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus. Sing it again. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Declare it again. Shout Jesus from the mountains, 
Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness, over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life Break every stronghold Shine through the shadows Burn like a fire I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. For I know there is peace in your presence. And I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom i speak jesus and i just want to speak the name of jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression, I speak Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire your name is power your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold shine through the shadows burn like a fire your name is power your name is power your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold shine through the shadows burn like a fire your name is power your name is healing your name Life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. For I know there is peace in your presence I speak Jesus hallelujah Lord we speak Jesus we speak Jesus we speak Jesus over every addiction we speak Jesus over all fear and anxiety we speak Jesus over depression we speak Jesus over every addiction. We speak Jesus over these mountains. We speak it in the streets. We speak it for our family. We speak that mighty name. Jesus. 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 
Mm. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. God, we worship you, Jesus. Lord, just be Lord over all. Everything that pertains to our life, be Lord of all. Jesus, break every stronghold. Lord, let light come into the darkness, the darkness of our lives, Lord. The places in our life that we haven't released to you, let it be released today. Lord, take every addiction, every depression, every power of the enemy over your people. Break it today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to that name. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord, because truly your name is power. Your name is healing. It's life. It breaks the strongholds. It causes the shadow to be filled with light. Lord, let your fire burn today. Oh, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. Lord, you're holy. You're almighty. You're the King of kings and you're the Lord of lords. And Lord, we bless you and praise you. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Lord, I thank you that all those things are in the name of Jesus. Every one of those things are available to every person that will believe and surrender their life to your Lordship. So today we surrender. God, we surrender to you. We surrender our, our failings. We surrender our weaknesses. We surrender our sin. We surrender our anything in our life that is not from you. We surrender it to you. We surrender our ambitions. We surrender what, what we hold closer than anything else. We surrender it to you. God, we pray that you would invade with your mercy and with your grace and with your love and with your power. God, let your glory be upon your people. We worship you today. And Lord, we just speak Jesus. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that name. So, Lord, we give you this praise today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You can be seated. I want to share with you this morning from the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3. I'm going to read verses 17 and 18. Habakkuk says this, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Father, as we look into your word, give us ears to hear what you want to say to your people. Let us know the truth so that the truth can make us free. Lord, let us follow your instructions 
so that we might persevere, so that we might overcome, so that we might endure until you call us home. In Jesus' name, amen. If you happen to make the mistake of listening to the news, you'll find out it's all bad. <clears throat> you'll hear stuff like, inflation in this nation is at a 41-year high. Baby formula has to be imported from some other country. The average price of gasoline is over $5 a gallon. It's a new record high. Food shortage could become more deadly than the pandemic. There's drought in the Southwest threatening the lives of many people. Gas shortages are imminent. There will be rolling electric blackouts this summer. <clears throat> and it just goes on and on. You know, when Habakkuk wrote these words I just read to you, his nation was in a quite similar condition. They were on the verge of disaster, which was the Babylonian captivity. The nation had rebelled against God, and it was being torn apart. And Habakkuk had heard from God, and he knew what was coming. And this is what he said. This is in Habakkuk 3 in verse 2. He said, O Lord, I've heard thy speech, and I was afraid. Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of years, make known in wrath, remember mercy. Like many believers today that know God's word, he was fearful for his nation, and he was praying to God to send revival. But he said, you know, if he doesn't, and if the worst comes to pass, and judgment falls across this land, I am still going to rejoice in the Lord. And I'm going to joy in the God of my salvation. That was his profession. And folks, I tell you, I believe we need to be making that same profession of faith. Regardless of what happens in this nation, we need to be doing what he was doing, crying out to God for revival, crying out to God to revive his work in the midst of years, crying out to God in wrath, remember mercy. But Lord, even if you don't, I'm going to rejoice in the God of my salvation. I'm going to joy in the Lord. Somebody would say, well, why could you even, how could you even consider rejoicing in a time like we have right now? Well, one reason is because God tells us to. And that's a good enough reason. Psalm 5 and verse 11 says this, But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. So God says, listen, if you put your trust in me, I want you rejoicing. I don't want you standing around and moping and, and worrying and complaining about what's going on. Folks, let me tell you something. What's happening is right on schedule. What's taking place in this earth is exactly what Jesus said had to happen before his return. He said these things must come to pass. He didn't say you've got to like them, but he said they have to happen. Don't worry. Rejoice. Rejoice. When you see these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws an eye. Now, folks, listen. Our problem is we're too worldly. We're too, we, our, our affection is too much on this world. We want to hang on to this earth. Why would you want to hang on to something that was full of suffering, sorrow, sadness, pain, sickness, and death? Somehow that don't make sense. It's kind of like somebody says, well, now listen, I've got this brand new Jag I'd like to give you. It's got all the latest accoutrements. You didn't even know I knew that word. I mean, it's, it is tricked out. It's awesome. And you say, well, I got this broke down jalopy that I've had for 50 years. It's got 256 million miles on it. The suspension's broke. The shocks have had it. It burns oil more than it burns gas, but I think I'll keep it. It's about that much sense, you know. <laughs> My goodness, why do we hang on to this world so tight? Because it's all we've known, isn't it? 
We just know what we see around us. God says you got to walk by faith, not by sight. Trust me. Trust me. Let all those that put their trust in the Lord rejoice because he knows what's ahead. He's already in control. He's perfect. He is perfecting the things that concern us, so we need to be rejoicing. And then there's another reason there. It says, because thou defendest them. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm glad that somebody is defending me, bigger than I am and better than anybody else that I know. God promises to defend his people. And he did. Even when they were down in Egypt having a tough time, when those plagues began to be sent in there, God made a difference between his people and the Egyptians. When God brought them out and he began that journey through the wilderness, God still defended them. Remember, he put a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire during the night. He, he caused the Red Sea to open so that they could go through. The enemy didn't make it so well. He rained down manna from heaven. Every nation that they encountered as they went through the wilderness on the way to the promised land, God enabled them to defeat. God fought for them. And you know what? The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if he fought for them, he'll fight, he'll fight for you. He'll fight for us if our trust is in him. So we need to be worshiping and, and rejoicing in him. If you look up the meaning of that word in Hebrew that said he defends them, it literally means to put a hedge about. To put a hedge about. You remember what uh, Satan accused God of doing with Job? You remember that? Job 1 and verse 10. Satan said this, he said, have you not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Do you know God's got a hedge about you if you have put your faith and trust in him? You might say, well, he's letting a lot of stuff come through it. Let me tell you something. The devil can't bring any through that, anything through that hedge that God does not allow. When Satan was wanting to do his worst to Job, God said, you can do this much and no more. And God has a hedge about you if your trust is in him. Now, Job, of course, the Bible says he was a perfect and upright man that feared God and hated evil. So God let him be tested pretty strongly. And folks, I don't know... I don't measure up to that, I can tell you that. So I don't think God's going to let me be tested quite as strongly as Job was. But God has a hedge about every one of his children. I love what that said. He said you got a hedge about him, about his house, and about all that he has on every side. We need to claim that. Every time the devil tries to come against us, we say get back behind that hedge, boy. God's got a hedge about me. He's got one about my house. He's got one about my family. Get over on the other side. We need to claim the promises of God. We need to stand on what God tells us and believe what God tells us. So we should be rejoicing in him because he commands us to. We need to be rejoicing in him because he defends us. And we should be rejoicing in him because it shows our faith. If you remember the account We've used it so many times of Jehoshaphat when those three armies, uh, the, the armies of three nations combined and come against him. And he was vastly outnumbered. But God said, I'll protect you. I'm going to fight for you. Just show up. You remember what happened? I'll read this to you from Second Chronicles 20 and 21. It says, and when he, Jehoshaphat, had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness. And as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. He said, how do you want to do this, fellas? They said, let's praise the Lord. Let's, let's fire up the band. Let's start worshiping as we go out that way. Why? Because it showed their faith. They had believed what God had said. God said, I'm going to fight for you. You don't have to fight. Just go on out there. So they said, okay. We believe it, and to prove it, we're just going to worship and sing all the way out to the battle. And you know what happened? The Bible says they began to worship and praise. God set an ambush for the enemy. God is willing to fight for you. He just wants you to put your trust in him and rejoice in him, even in the midst of what seems to be insurmountable odds. We should rejoice because it shows our faith. 
we should rejoice because it brings healing and puts the enemy to flight. Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. There's a lot of broken spirits in this world. You know what I believe? I believe the reason that uh, <laughs> we're dry is because we've let the world break our spirit. We've let the news get in and we begin to dwell on that news and we begin to think about how bad things are and that there's no hope and it's just going to keep going downhill and get worse and worse. And that just breaks our spirit. And because of that, we're dry and we're not worth two cents. You know, if your crops don't get rain, they don't grow. They wither up. And folks, if we let our spirit be broken, the Bible says it dries us up. It dries our bones. So instead of letting the world break our spirit, we need to be believing the word of God and rejoicing in the God of our salvation and watch the rain of heaven start causing us to grow and be fruitful. Rejoice in the God of our salvation because a merry heart is like a medicine. So it heals. I love that scripture in 1 Samuel 16, 23, when Saul had disobeyed God and God sent an evil spirit to torment him. Now here's something that's really interesting. This shows the power of rejoicing and praising and worshiping even in the midst of a tough time. The Bible says, and it came to pass when the evil spirit from God, that's an amazing thought, was upon Saul David took a harp, played with his hand, Saul was refreshed, he was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Here's something that's interesting. Even though God sent the evil spirit, it couldn't stay in the presence of somebody that was rejoicing and worshiping God. Think about that. When the devil starts to bug you and when he starts to try to put thoughts in your mind and when he starts to drag you down, you start rejoicing in the God of your salvation and the Bible says you're going to be refreshed and well and the evil is going to depart. There's power in worshiping God and rejoicing in the midst of a difficult situation. We need to rejoice because it brings healing and because it puts the enemy to flight. We need to rejoice because it's a witness to the lost. 1 Peter 3.15 but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. When Paul was arrested for the testimony of Jesus Christ and he went through all that he did, the final thing was an appeal to Caesar. And you remember the account of how he was put on a ship and it was the wrong time of year for sailing in the Med. I mean, it, the, 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 it was subject to storms, tremendous storms. And if you remember what happened, they, of course, got into a storm. And they hadn't seen the sun or the stars or anything except tempest for days and days and days. And all of a sudden, Paul says, I want you to be of good cheer. Because this night the angel of the God that I serve stood by me and said, you're not going to lose your life because you have to go and appear before Caesar. And I've not only spared your life, but I'm going to give you the life of all the people that are sailing with you. And the reason he said that was this, Psalm 34 and verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him and delivers them. You see, if you fear God, God's got an angel that stays with you. And the Bible says he'll deliver you. Paul could stand there on the deck of a ship that was falling apart, that the wind was howling, the waves were tremendously high, everybody scared to death. And he said, I want you to be of good cheer. And every one of us need to be saying that to this scared to death world. We need to say you can be of good cheer because the God that I serve has his angel that will watch over you. 
The God that I serve is going to deliver you. The God that I serve will make sure that you make it if you put your faith and trust in him. The reason I can rejoice, the reason I can be glad, the reason I can celebrate when the world is going to pot is because of the God that I serve and the promise that he has made. And if we'd start living that, if we'd start proclaiming that, you'd see people turning to Jesus. But folks, if we walk around looking like everybody else in the world, yeah, it's going to hell in a bucket. Everything's bad. The government's stupid. On and on and on. It won't work. It's not going to help. Everybody else saying the same thing. But if you walk around and say, let me tell you something. I've got hope for tomorrow. I'm not scared to death. Regardless of what happens, I have a God that's on the throne and he's coming back for me. Glory. Don't let the world see you in the same condition that they're in. Why would they want it? They got enough. Let the world see you rejoicing in the God of your salvation. Let the world see you enjoy saying, I'm so glad that Jesus set me free. I'm so glad that I've got hope. I'm so glad that I've got a soon coming king. As I see what's happening, it just confirms this book. And it tells me Jesus is coming. And when he comes, everything's going to change, let me tell you. This world is going to be what it's supposed to be. He's prepared something for me. The day's coming when I'll get to rule and reign with him. I've got a hope for tomorrow. Rejoice in the God of your salvation because it's a witness to the lost. We should rejoice in the God of our salvation because the joy of the Lord is our strength. We've heard that so many times. When Nehemiah, Ezra, and all of them were back rebuilding Jerusalem and rebuilding the walls of the city and rebuilding the temple. They began to talk to the people about the plan of God and, and, and the judgments of the Lord. The Bible says the people began to weep and they began to mourn. But Nehemiah said something else. He said, this is in Nehemiah chapter 8 in the last part of verse 10. He said, this day is holy unto our Lord, neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. This day is holy. Don't weep and be sorry for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Regardless of how these days look, let me tell you something. These days are holy. And they're holy because God made them. Psalm 118 verse 24, this is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Folks, let me tell you something. If God made it, it's holy. It's holy. The evil you see around you, God didn't make. But the day he made, and we need to be rejoicing in the days that he gives us. We need to be rejoicing because what we see unfolding is exactly what he said would happen. We serve a holy God. And the days are holy that you and I are living in. They're fulfilling the word of God. It's prophecy unfolding before you. It's like there's a big billboard up here that says, look what's happening. The Bible's true. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You might say, well, <laughs> all that sounds good. We're supposed to be rejoicing in the Lord, but how in the world, how in the world can we do that? Everything depends on our focus. Everything depends on what matters to us. You see, if our focus is on what's happening in the world, if we sit and watch the news constantly, if we live on social media, if our conversation is constantly on how bad things are and how evil the world is, <laughs> we're going to have a tough time rejoicing in the Lord. If what matters to us is the comforts of life if what matters to us is maintaining a certain standard of living the days that we're entering in are going to be devastating because folks i'm telling you things are about to change they're already changing but it's going to change more and more the only way that we can rejoice in the lord in these days is do what colossians chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 says listen if you be risen with christ in other words if you're saved Seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God and set your affections on things above and not on the things of the earth. 
That's what we have to do. We have a hard time with that because we're attached to this world. We have a hard time with that because we're still human. We're still in, in human bodies. We still have a lot of flesh in us. So there's a struggle. Paul talked about it. He said, you know, I, I've got this war going on in me. But he said, thanks be to God that gives us the victory. The Jesus in you, the Holy Spirit that's in you can cause you to, you know, if you'll surrender to him, cause you to overcome that flesh, overcome that desire to cling to the things of this world. The only way we can set our affection on things above is to seek them by dwelling on them, by searching them out in God's word, by spending time seeking God's face, and by asking him to direct our attention where it ought to be. It's like that old song says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. That's what we've got to do. You see, we need to be seeking God and his glory. I love that account of Moses and God talking. And Moses said, Lord, if I have found favor with you, show me your glory. And you know what? He did. He did. He showed Moses his glory. Over in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 8, Jesus said this, For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Folks, we're entering a time right now where our survival is going to depend on our seeking God. We need to be seeking him daily. We need to be saying, Lord, show me your glory. Let a little bit of that glory shine through into my life just like it did with Moses, so that when he came down from your presence, his face was shining and people looked at it and said, man, you've been with God. We need the glory of God on us so that people can say that they've been with Jesus. You remember when the disciples got arrested for preaching and healing the guy in the temple? Drug them before the, you know, the Sanhedrin and, and they were examining them. And, and they began to share what Jesus had done. And God, uh, they looked at them and saw the boldness that they had and realized how much scripture they knew and how much of the presence of God they had experienced. And the Bible says they took notice of them that they'd been with Jesus. Folks, we need to be so with the Lord that people will notice that we've been with him. We need to have so much of God's glory on us that people will see something different about us and want to know what it is. We need to seek Jesus. We need to seek his face and his glory. Listen to this, Psalm 34, verse 10. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. You see, if we're seeking God, God says, I'll supply your need. It doesn't matter how bad things get around you. If necessary, I'll rain manna from heaven. Listen to that again. They that seek the Lord shall want, not want any good thing. It means not be in lack. Not, you know, have, have a need that's not being met. They'll not lack any good thing. God says, I'll supply your need. You put your trust in me. You seek my face, and I'll take care of you. Folks, we don't have to depend on the world's methods. We don't have to depend on the government. We don't have to depend on our ability. We don't have to depend on anything but God. Time after time, Jesus would say, listen, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. All the nations of the world seek after these things, but you seek me and I'll see that you have what you need. God promises that he'll meet our need. So folks, now's the time. Now's the time to be certain of your relationship with him. Now's the time to return and renew and surrender to his lordship. Now's the time. Don't wait. Don't wait until the crisis gets so bad that you're in desperation. Make sure the blood of Christ has been applied to your life. Remember what Revelation 12 and verse 11 says. Jesus tells us that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, and loving not our lives even unto death. 
You know, a lot of times we love this life in this world so much that we let it bring death to our spiritual life. But God says, listen, if you're willing to let this life die, if you're willing to let the, the things of this world in your life die, you're going to overcome. You're going to walk with me. You're going to rule and reign with me. So now's the time when we have to decide if we're going to rejoice in the Lord no matter what or if we're going to be like the rest of the world. You see, unless the Lord intervenes, we're facing a time like Habakkuk experienced. Let me read that verse 7 to you, 17 to you again from chapter 3. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine. The labor of the olive shall fail. The fields yield no meat. The flock cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Boy, that sounds like a famine. That sounds like a time when the supply chain has definitely been interrupted. It sounds like a time when you've got a shortage of everything. And that's where we're going unless God intervenes. But listen, he said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And that's where we've got to be. We've got to walk by faith and not by sight. We've got to believe the word of God. We've got to put our trust in him and in him alone and say, I, regardless, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord because I know the reasons to do it. And listen to this last verse, verse 19. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like hind's feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places. God said, you put your trust in me and you rejoice in the Lord and you joy in the God of your salvation and I'll let you walk over the problems that you're facing. I'll raise you up and I'll put you on the high places. I'll set you with me and you'll overcome. So folks, we have to make a choice. Whether we're going to be like the world, down and out, complaining, worried, sick, or whether we're going to say, Lord, I don't know how it's going to work, but I know one thing. You're going to defend me. I know that you're going to perfect the thing that concerns me. I know that you're going to supply my need. And even if all this comes to pass, I'm going to rejoice in you because I know what my future is. I know that I don't have to worry about hell because heaven's my destiny. I know I don't have to worry about whether I have much in this world or not because the day is going to come when I'm going to be richer than the greatest billionaire of this world. I don't have to worry about the future because you've got it in your hand. I don't have to worry about where I'm going to be <coughs> in a hundred years from now because I know I'll be with you enjoying eternal life. <coughs> so I'm going to rejoice in the God of my salvation. That's what we've got to do because that joy is our strength. Let's stand. <coughs> Father, as we conclude this morning, Lord, I ask you to forgive me for every time that I've allowed the world to get me down and out. For every time that I've joined in saying how bad things are, how hopeless the situation is. Lord, forgive me for every time that I've bad-mouthed all, you know, the government, the nation, <clears throat> all these things. Because even though it may be the case, what you're saying is you want what comes out of my mouth to be truth, to be edifying, to be a blessing, to lift people up, to give them hope, to speak your word. Your word says, if any man speak, let him speak as an oracle of God. An oracle of God is someone that speaks the word of God, the, the, the will of God. And Lord, what we speak so many times is, is nothing more than what the world says. Lord, help us to remember, a merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. God, let us be confessing that regardless if the stalls are empty and the crops fail, I will yet rejoice in the God of my salvation. I will joy in the Lord. I am not going to be like the world. I'm not going to bring a message of gloom, doom, and despair. I'm going to declare that my God reigns. And I'm going to declare that he is soon to return to this earth. And I'm going to declare that there is hope for the future. And his name is Jesus. 
So, Father, I pray for your people. I pray that for every one of us, you would cause the joy of the Lord to rise up in us. I pray for anyone, Lord, that's, that's down and out today to be lifted up and the, the, the prince of darkness would be dispelled from their life because of the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over every one of these. And, Lord, if there's anyone here today that is not right with you, let this be the moment that they come to you, Lord. They surrender to you. They yield their life to you, and they put their hope and their faith and trust in you. Lord, I thank you for your promise that says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Lord, help us to begin to seek you as we've never sought you before. Help us to begin to rejoice in you as we've never rejoiced before. And help us to show the world that we have hope and be able to give a reason for the hope that's within us and let them see the hope. Because if we're not showing that hope, they won't ask us about it. Father, we thank you for this time today. As we're standing here in the presence of God for just a moment, if you're here today and you're not certain about your relationship with God, there's some concern there in your heart. Maybe, maybe you know you've never given your life to Him. Maybe you have, but you've drifted away. Something, something is not right. He says today, come. Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'm going to give you rest. So I'm just going to ask you to do something this morning as we're here in this moment, this, this holy moment before the throne of God with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. If you're here and you're not where you want to be with God, I want to pray for you. Just as we stand right here, I want to pray for you. If you just slip your hand up and say, I, I, there's something I need. There's something I need. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, you've seen the hands that went up this morning. And Lord, you want people to be, you want them to be close to you. You want them to be surrendered to you. You want to be God of, of every aspect of their life. And Lord, there's nothing in our lives that are hidden from you. You know everything about us. There's nothing we can hide. And you love us even with all the little nooks and crannies and dark places that, that you haven't been allowed in yet. And Lord, today as as we've raised our hands before you I pray that you just put your hand on each one of these and let them feel the love of God that's beyond comprehension or beyond explanation let them feel your arms welcome them, welcoming them and saying come on come to me and just give everything to me and watch what I can do Lord I thank you that you're the God of mercy and amazing grace you're the God of first second third and ten thousand chances you're the God that is able to do more than we can ever ask or think. So, Lord, I ask your blessing on each one of these that raised their hands. And, Lord, your blessing on all of us. And, Lord, help us to be those that, regardless of what happens, yet we will rejoice in the Lord and joy in the God of our salvation. We thank you for this time together. We give you praise and honor and glory. And we bless the name of Jesus. And in that name we pray and every, everybody said, amen, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful Lord's Day.